the gamers, you know, they're 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 in revolt right now. And we've got Gamergate 2.0, whatever you want to call it. But they had a game developers conference in San Francisco. And they had a Scream event about it. And I don't mean a screening of the movie Scream. I mean that they got together and they said, let's scream about it. Let's go ahead and watch a clip of that. This guy is screaming at the top of his lungs. I don't know. I try to turn it down for y'all, but this is insane. I think you can hear the other guy from the other phone yelling on this one. So again, people have lots of comments on these videos about how, you know, it's not that big of a deal what's happening. Um, you're not looking into it deep enough or you're looking too deep into it often. But these are your game these are your game developers here. These are the people we've got, you know, the popsicle colored hairs, the the old frumpy guy who's bleaching his hair. You've got all the cast of characters taking place in something that's inherently liberal. Something that was popularized when Trump got elected. The stand outside and scream out your sorrows because you're an adult and you can't deal with your own feelings. And people are going to say, Andrew, that's mean. You don't know that. But we do. They say it. Everything that they're doing, everybody's having a problem with now. And I'm talking about extremely far left progressives who are injecting their viewpoints into everything. And now that people are finally speaking up and having a problem with it, they don't know what to do. They try to explain themselves and they get further mocked because they don't make any sense. So they can't deal with it. And they're being forced to, you know, they got the only way they can deal with their emotions is to scream like psychopaths. And so this was the event that they scheduled the GDS scream that it was at the game developers, um, was it Summit or just the, uh, sorry, the Game Developers Conference? Game Developers Scream, I guess. And it says, the game industry is falling apart around us and we're all flocking to San Francisco for a week to pretend like it's fine. We'll take a minute where we all stop and pr stop pretending and express just how it feels to be a game developer. Join us for a collective moment of catharsis, camaraderie, and caterwauling. Let's descend upon Yerba Buena and when the clock strikes noon, have ourselves a, ni a nice big GDS cream. This is, you know, a person trying really hard to sound intelligent when they're just about to engage and they're organizing something that's extremely infantile. Let's get together and, and scream. And they, they try to say it and word it in a sarcastic manner like it. We know how silly it is, but they're still doing it. And IGN covered this, and so did um, PC Gamer. And and the people that spoke to these companies, mainly the organizers, which are guy, a, a guy from Epic Games, of course, and a woman from who works for Fortnite, of course. And they really, really showcased how sad this group of people is because they can't handle people not liking what they say. Um, the public screen organized by Epic games producer, Carly Shaw, Carol Shaw and Fortnite festival designer, Scott, John Siegel took place, blah, 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 a rocks, raw expression of outrage over an industry that has laid off thousands throwing countless lives in turmoil. Now that's the one side that you can agree with, with, right? If people are saying that we have a problem with how, you know, they're throwing us aside because they're just maximizing profits. You know, that's an argument people can get behind. That the gigantic industry that it has now become does not care about people and just cares about the bottom lines. But that is business. But you have some frustration there that people can relate to. But speaking to PC Gamer, he said that he was prompted to organize the event by the frustration he's felt over widespread layoffs and the recent Gamergate 2.0 controversy over Sweet Baby Inc. So on what you've got one part 
um, treatment from the industry, another part, you know, DEI. And and what this says to me is these gaming companies might be saying, aside from their inherent, you know, big corporation evilness, they might be saying, hey, you guys got to knock it off a little with the DEI stuff because we need to make money. And, I, and I'm very confident saying that that's got to be part of it because when these people don't get their way, this is how they act. They act like they're being attacked. And by these people, I mean psychos, losers, people who are obsessed with race and gender and all that. When you have this many people coming together in the game industry, going to all these events, having all these people attend presentations and award ceremonies where not necessarily everyone is even mentioning the layoffs, even mentioning where the culture is currently, it all feels absurd. At the end of the day, it feels hard to be here and pretend like everything is fine. Can we just get together for a moment, a single minute, smack in the middle? Can we just get some cathartic caterwauling together? See, he uses the same words that he used. He must talk like this all the time to try to sound smart. Even if we can say nothing else, blah, blah, blah. Let's just talk about how things are not okay. The, nothing specific is addressed by any of these people, really. They just say how they're hurt and how they're sad. Developer Jimmy Chi, he says, you know, record profits. He's he's about as specific as anyone gets. And he says many of his friends are losing their jobs, which has resulted in house, losing a house, losing their visa, and even, even deportation. These people are, are seeing reality, and they can't, they can't handle it. For once, they're seeing reality. This happened when Elon Musk took over Twitter, and, you know, 70% or whatever of the people got fired because they were, you know, their lives were going to work and having six breaks per day and taking Fridays off and vlogging on TikTok, their, their daily routine of doing nothing. Venture capitalism funding is a little poisonous because you have are an indie publisher and you get some sort of VC funding. You're basically an ind indentured indie developer. So people give you money to make a game and you're a slave, essentially, is what this person is saying. No one believes in organic growth at the top, whereas everyone knows at the bottom organic growth makes more money over time. So you took money from a venture capitalist who wants his money back and you're calling it slavery. This is how these people think. This is how, you know... They've come to be in their jobs and, and taken for granted. You work in the video game industry, and all of a sudden you're a communist. It, it doesn't make any sense. And you, and you think I'm lying. We could talk about the other people who said that they, they said now is the time to, <laughs> to unionize. So let's jump on over to um, IGN's rendition, who has a similar, you know... Um, because people are going to say, oh, it wasn't actually about DEI stuff. You have the organizer saying it. You have an individual saying it. Um, and then you have this woman's take on it, which is Rebecca Valentine from IGN. And we can see, I mean, we can see Rebecca. We can see, we can see senior reporter from San Francisco Bay Area. I asked Siegel why they personally were screaming. Is this guy non-binary? Is that why they were calling them they? I couldn't tell by reading this because PC Gamer didn't say they. Siegel replied, noting that he had a they had. Yeah, so this guy's using they pronouns. It's like, how can you... Like, you can... We're at the point where you can just look at people and people are always going to say, oh, you can't judge people, but you can look at these people and you get one piece of information, and that piece of information is that they got together to scream about their jobs. You can predict their whole worldview. It all comes with this whole portfolio of views. And it's, um, you know, basically Marxism. There's no such thing as gender. I should I should be able to look however I want, and you still have to hire me. Um, these are my pronouns. If you don't use my pronouns or address me how I want, you're murdering me. You know, kids need to... to to go trans, it's all in the same handbook. They were struggling to recommend aspiring game developers. Blah, 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 blah. Um, I entered the games industry in my early 20s because I love games so much, and I found that I had this passion for building them and building experiences. That passion, uh, it, it's so hard to read because it's so stupid. It's an industry that really feeds on that passion and takes advantage of that passion, and that's broken my heart over and over again. I just wanted to scream about it. The writer says, As I chatted with a number of the developers attending the scream, it seemed many of them had shown up for those exact reasons. 
I'm screaming because I was just a really good, valuable, much appreciated session that I absolutely hated. Don't know what that means. One game developer who asked uh, to be anonymous told me, because we talked about diversity in games and we were all marginalized people and we're looking at each other going, yeah, it sucks for some reason we have to do this, but we cannot not do this. And I don't know how to deal with the obligation of having to do this because I'm the person that I am. Mentally unwell. This is how I can define words like this. We cannot not do this. We have to get together based on our race. We have to get together and talk about how we're non-white. Because whenever they say uh, marginalized people, that means anything but straight white people. Always. And everybody's sick of tiptoeing around the subject. This is what they mean. They categorize themselves and then say, why do we have to get together and categorize ourselves? Because people are unhappy with the products that you're putting out. People are unhappy with the products that you're putting out because it's all gender and diversity based. And then when you hear that, you're just like, well, they're marginalizing us again. They don't like what we're putting out. They don't like what we're saying. You're being mean. You don't like what I, you don't agree exactly with what I'm doing. Mean. You're a mean guy. Another anonymous industry figure who works on the business side, which, you know, that could mean anything to these people. The business side could be like <laughs> the president of the company. They were screaming because the industry is in an interesting spot where our, our fiscal needs and our creative needs are not matching up. See, I, I think my prediction was true. It's causing a lot of damage, which I think will have a long-term effect on people in the pipeline. Obviously, a lot of people came together from something that isn't the usual GDC vibe. We all have a lot of tension that needs to be released. Layoffs in the past couple of years have been absolutely horrible, said Robin Labuglio, a gameplay programmer. We screamed because we're angry. My partner and I was actually, of course, lesbians again. I, I think, or you're calling each other uh, partners. But we're also here because we really want people to know that you don't just have to be angry. You don't have to just feel hopeless. I think it's really, really urgent this time that people use the leverage that we have to unionize. I told you. Because while we have a job, you have that leverage. There's still time. And this isn't unionizing against AI, you guys. This is which I would support. Which is a part of the Hollywood strike that I supported. This isn't what this is. This is let's unionize so that the companies can't tell us that we can't do DEI stuff. This is what it is. If you think that these people have reasonable demands, if you think these people have a belief system that puts merit and hard work first, you're wrong. We've been through this a hundred thousand times now. And if I'm wrong, then I'm wrong. I will always leave the door open for being wrong. But if, you know, if the house burns down 35 times because of wildfires, it might be time to move out of the range of the wildfires. So when we've sounded the alarm on this a hundred thousand times before, and it was correct, a we, we start to see these patterns, people talking about unionizing, people saying that they're being marginalized, people saying that um, they need to gather together and scream because they're not being heard. People saying that they have to gather based on their race, gender, and sexuality. These are the telltale signs of people who don't like what they're being told. And they got these jobs based on these um, you know, these basic characteristics of being a human that you can't change and therefore shouldn't be celebrated, that being your race and your gender. And they 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 are no longer being rewarded for this. The the populace and the consumer is saying, hey, we don't like this, and now they don't know what to do. So they're saying we have to call you mean, we have to say it's discriminatory for you to, you know, fire us or get rid of us or tell us to change. So we must unionize and change that. That is what's going to happen. That is what they're going for. I promise you, I would bet upwards of a few hundred doggery dues, doge coins even, that this is what they're getting together to do. And and the sweet baby ink thing, considering that they mentioned that this is why they organized it, is proof in the pudding of that. They're going after people, allegedly, just because they don't like what they're doing. They're not doing anything to them other than saying, hey, we don't like what you're doing and these are the games you've worked on. And I'm going to say, don't... They don't even say don't play these games. They just, they just say these are the games they've worked on and we don't like it. And then the response is allegedly to go after these people to say that they're harassing you. Get this person canceled because they're they're harassing me. 
It's a very backwards way of thinking. And the only way this gets fixed is if the gaming community stands up for himself. They have a tendency not to, you know, AI watching what you say in an Xbox live chat and banning you didn't stand up to that. Uh, DLC by way of microtransactions didn't stand up to that. Getting rid of discs for digital downloads at the same price that can be ripped away from you at any time didn't stand up for that. The gaming community needs to stand up to, against this and they need to stand up for themselves right now because these people are have always and will continue to unionize as we've seen and in a more generic and general sense, gather together and fight and stand together faster than most people will. The communists can get together. They will do that to protect themselves. This is what they've been doing for years now. They get together and they say, how do we guarantee ourselves income? Guarantee ourselves income. And that's by forcing people to give them money. And if they don't, you call them hateful uh, liars, bigots, racists, etc. So nigh, nigh is the time. Turn it up, Jordan.